Hi, so with the wind generator we need to do two more things. One is put on a whole load more coils and test it, for which I need to collect some coils, which I'm doing. And the other thing is just to test it as it is in its four coil configuration, but for that I need some wind. Now apparently there's going to be no wind, there certainly isn't any today for the next couple of days, so I'm waiting for the wind to pick up. That means there's a little bit of a hiatus, but it also brings up a really interesting point, and that is quite often you're waiting for wind, so what on earth do you do? do when you're looking at home generation. Now, my neighbours gave me this. I mean, I have awesome neighbours. And this is a cheap Chinese knockoff petrol-driven generator. They tell me it wasn't up to what they wanted it for, and so they gave it to me. Now, I was wondering what to do about this, really. I don't really want to run it off petrol. I mean, who does? You want to do something else with it, don't you? And this is the second generator we have, because remember, we found one by the road, which is still waiting for something to be done with it. But this one was working. I mean, uh, they used it once, actually, and then gave it to me. I just drained all the petrol out of it. And I was pondering what to do with it. Now, what I really like, and what seems to be a good option, is gasification. Now, gasification is, is quite a lot of information on the internet about it, and it is quite venerable in its history. It, it sort of came out really about the 1800s, I suppose, when you're thinking about things like town gas and uh, coal gas, that sort of thing. Died a death with uh, natural gas and with electricity generation, and then was picked up again during World War II when there was a, a real shortage of petrol for people. And a whole lot of people um, built gasification units to run their cars and various bits and pieces off. Because the gas that you get from wood gasification, the little bit of cleaning can be fed straight into a generator engine. Of course, that's got to be interesting, hasn't it? So I thought I'd run a project on building a gasifier that will run this so that we can have generation when there's no wind. It seemed awesome to me. Now, there are problems in gasification. It isn't sort of the cure-all. And it used to be um, actually coke gasification, because coke gasification is how they began in World War II. But when coke started getting uh, short, they went to wood gasification. And now, of course, we're looking at biomass gasification. So there's been a, quite a history. But it, it isn't a cure-all, but it is certainly an interesting approach, because, because what you're doing is partly burning the material. You burn it in a reduced oxygen atmosphere, so it doesn't all burn, and then the gases given off can be further burnt in uh, an engine like this. So it isn't as efficient, it isn't as energy dense, rather, would be a better way of putting it, than petrol. But it is still a great way of generating from redundant biomass. And of course you are partially burning it, so you are also getting heat from the thing. So as a combined heat power, it could be an attractive option. I certainly thought so. I'm sticking to the thing. I certainly thought so. So I certainly, certainly thought I'd have a look at it. So the plan is to build a gasification unit to run this. Now, this is all full of shiny bits of metal, and it looks lovely and chunky. But let's take a few bits off, like these fancy plates and the petrol tank. That's it stripped out. I mean, it's not much of a strip out. All I did was take the shiny bits off from the petrol tank. And when you do that, then, of course, there's not that much to it. We've got the main engine here. Full start there. That's the exhaust. And then there's the generator right there. And a little bit of output electronics there. So not a lot to it. Now, all you actually do with the gasification unit is generate the gas and feed it straight into the carburetor because the whole thing is supposed to run just from wood gas. Now, this again raised its head in the sort of 70s and 80s due to the oil crisis when everybody was worried about being at the mercy of the oil producing countries and there was some great stuff produced, particularly FEMA. FEMA did need a, a booklet on how to make one of these things and the latest edition is 1989. That's the one I'm going to use to build my gasification unit and I'll put a link to that in the description incidentally should anybody else want to um, do this. But the ideal thing about gasification units, apparently, is that they lend themselves readily to people doing it all by themselves. During the war, there were factory-produced units. Some automobile manufacturers did make gasification cars, but apparently the efficiency of them wasn't any better than the home-built units. The only difference was the home-built units wore out a bit quicker because they didn't use as good materials as the factory-produced um, devices. But on the whole, there was no change in efficiency.
that's very encouraging really if you think about it uh, so I plan on building that sticking it onto here and doing that in a series of videos so the next video is really going to be making about making the firebox because we now have our generator all sorted now, like I say this thing cost apparently 180 pounds it's a Chinese knockoff not very expensive if you want to do something like this. And burning gasification um, gas apparently smells a bit like a campfire. So no, no, nowhere near as offensive as a petrol engine would be. And given that we're actually part burning it, as I say, we're going to get heat and we're going to get power in a combined unit when we can't use other renewables. Well, that's the plan. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and look out for the next ones.